Hello everybody, I'm Cougar Pegasus, and today we're taking a look at the M1 Garand, and we're going to compare the rifle directly with its in-game counterparts. The rifle used in this video is a fairly new Springfield reproduction, so keep that in mind because the rifle is not quite broken in yet. But first, let's discuss iron sights. So this is what it looks like when you actually aim down the sights of a Garand. But for the purpose of the comparison, we're going to zoom out a little bit. So as you can see, the Garand has a rear aperture sight that is pretty small. As you'll see with just about every game, the aperture sight turns into more of a ring sight, but that makes it so it's more open in-game and it's easier to use. First we're going to be taking a look at Battlefield 5, which I think is one of the best. Overall, the rear of the weapon is just modeled very well and looks pretty accurate to the actual gun. Next we have Battlefield 2042, which also looks pretty good. This model is very similar to the Battlefield 5 model, but like every other portal gun, just Battlefield 5 did it better. Now we got Hell Let Loose, which doesn't look bad, but doesn't look that great either. I think it would look a lot better if the adjustment knobs on the side were just a little bit thicker, but I mean it gets the job done. For being released in 2005, I think Day of Defeat has a really accurate depiction. It, the knobs are a bit thicker on the side, and there's writing just below the sight that you can see, and it also has a little bit of a th thicker sight too. Overall, I just think Day of Defeat is really well made. Looking at them side by side, Vanguard's Garand just looks horrendous. The dials are way too small on the side, and the rear sight is raised up way too high. It's not that noticeable when you're running around in game with it, but there's just no unseeing how terrible this weapon looks. And last and possibly least, we have Call of Duty World War II, which, again, the, it looks horrible. It's about the same issues as Vanguard's Garand, which makes it even worse if they just use the same model again. So, ranking these from best to worst, I'd say that Battlefield V probably had the most accurate. Day of Defeat looks very good as well, considering how old the game is. Battlefield 2042 Portal is basically just a copy-paste from Battlefield 5. Hell Let Loose is okay, and World War II is terrible, and Vanguard, I think, is even worse. So loading the M1 Garand can be a little bit tricky, um, because you have to be a little bit careful of this bolt here and make sure that it doesn't close on your thumb, and that's where the term M1 thumb comes from, is this bolt closing and snatching your thumb in there. So, what you have to do, is kind of put that in there, then take your right hand and make sure that's really got a good hold on the bolt, and then push the other rounds in, once you hear it click, let go. And it's loaded. Alright, so some games won't allow you to partially reload the grand, but this definitely is possible. And how you do it is you have to both pull this charging handle back and hit this clip eject. So if you just pull it back, then it launches one round, and then you have to hit the button on the side as well. Like that. With all that being said, let's take a look at the games from earlier, but let's see how they depict reloading. This one is terrible because there's no ping. So most of these were pretty good, until we got to Call of Duty Vanguard, of course, where oddly hitting the eject button just allows the character to pull the clip out, but as we saw earlier, when you hit that button, the clip flies out of the gun, so it's called a clip eject for a reason, not a clip release. So next we're going to get pretty scientific and talk about mag dumping. So you can probably accurately fire M1 Garand about 40 to 50 rounds a minute, but if you were to just spam the trigger, you could probably get 
rounds out about four times quicker than that. So this first clip is just going to be us just mag dumping a grand, and he's trying to actually hit this deal. So without further ado, let's look at the games. Alright, so this is the end block clip of a Garand, and this is where the ping sound comes from. It comes from the springiness of the um, metal, and it's not the mechanism of the gun itself. Kind of flick it there, or when you drop it. Alright, so here's probably the most controversial reload on the video, that being with the Garand ping on a partial reload, and the answer kind of depends on how many rounds are left in the clip. Since the ping sound comes from the springiness of the metal of the clip, it honestly depends on how many rounds are left. It so typically if you have less than four rounds in the clip, when you eject it, those rounds will get loose and cause that ping sound. So yeah, I was wrong on this one. Because as you saw in the last clip, if there's any room for that clip to move at all, it will ping because the metal will be able to make that sound. So you could say the Call of Duty World War II M1 Grand Reload is not cursed. Case closed. I hope you were able to take away something from this video today. And I plan to make more videos like this one in the future that kind of compare the guns shown in video games and the differences between them and the actual gun in real life. So if you have a gun that you would like to see, let me know down in the comments because I plan to make a little series on this in the future. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next video.